up at night because he goes to her and he would even volunteer to come up and pick me up. But I said, I don't know about that because I don't believe you. You know what I mean? But the most dangerous thing that any of us possess is what we know. And when we know something that we know something that we know it, that no one can change our mind, then we are a threat. And the same is true of the devil. When we know the word of God is true, when we stand fast in his word and we do not waver, he's already lost. It's when we allow him to creep into our lives, whether we realize it or not, whether he sneaks in through uh, different thoughts and disguises himself as us, whether he sneaks in and tries to uh, disguise himself as somebody else. That's when he's trying to really get to us. But as long as we stand fast in the word of God and we do not doubt, I know what I think. Years ago, I learned about the devil. And the pastor from Harrisburg, Richard Hare, built this church up here in Lancaster. He's the one who uh, educated me about how smart the devil is. And you never think of that. He said how smart the devil is, how he tries to make you think and get into oh, yeah. your life and make you think this is the right way, and then so he can crush you. Yep. I mean, I never thought about the devil that smart. I thought he was stupid. Yeah, you know, well, he, he knows was very intelligent. You know, that's what he's telling me. He's very clever and very intelligent. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he is. So when it comes down to not only does a lack of faith decrease our protection of the believer, but it displays a regression on the part of the believer and will ultimately, ultimately lead to us displeasing God. Because remember Hebrews eleven verse six: Without faith, it is impossible to believe to please Him. And with that being said, we're already over time, so we're going to stop right here for today, and we're going to prepare our hearts for service. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you all praise and glory for everything you've done for us and shall continue to do. Lord, we thank you that you're God who reigns on high and that there's none like you, Lord. Even right now, we rebuke every attack of the enemy that should come our way. We pray that you set your angels at the four corners of the property above and below, that no attack of the enemy may penetrate. I pray that our hearts and our minds will be in one mindset and one accord that we may worship you in sincerity and truth, that the Holy Ghost may move as he so desires. I pray, Lord, that our hearts and minds will be clouded, that they be good soil for your word to fall on, that we may remember it throughout the week, Lord, but even greater than that, that we may apply it to our life, that we may be changed and even transformed farther into your very image, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you anoint know, the song leader and the musicians, give them the songs you'd have us to sing as they praise you on string instruments upon the vocal chords. Anoint the song leader as... He lead us in songs you have us to sing. Anoint the pastor's mind and his lips as he brings forth your words today, Lord. And anoint our minds and our hearts to be ready to receive them, that we may apply them to our lives. Because you alone are holy and worthy, my God. And that's exactly what this is all about, being transformed into the very image of Jesus Christ. That we may know him in the power of his resurrection. And we ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen.